Hi and welcome everyone. Greatly appreciated for the ongoing support that you give this channel. So we have a few problems today. Another problem. One CME, then we were waiting for two CMEs, and now we're waiting for a third CME. I haven't heard from the first one hitting yet. There was talk of a G3, uh, which is a strong, massive storm, but now an X1 halo occurred on the sun, March 31st, 2022, today, and it's on its way to Earth, supposedly from here till till Saturday. We should uh, start uh, feeling it or seeing it or expecting it. At one point, we're going to see aurora borealises everywhere, all the auroras, the north and the south. Uh, like way back during the Carrington event in 1859, sorry, when there was a giant CME that hit Earth and that for days on end, um, everyone could see the auroras in the sky, these beautiful colors, beautiful but dangerous it's radiation, the solar radiation. We'll see that more and more. Hey, expect the weather to ramp up to get really, really crazy, of course. A look at the field lines here. Hey, an X class flare, guys. X is the biggest, okay? And there's from one to nine, I guess, like uh, earthquakes on a Richter scale, but this is very, very dangerous, especially that not one, not two, but now three CMEs on their way to Earth if there's not one that already hit. Do you see that line there that's crossing over the other line there? The magnetic field lines align themselves and when they cross over themselves, it can per, uh, it can cause a halo CME and that's exactly what occurred, but this time an X-class flare. And you know what's scaring me most? It's not coming from the biggest sunspots, but what looks visually small doesn't mean it's not um, more dangerous than the other large sunspots. I think it's very hard to understand the science of it all. Heliophysics is not something that's easy to comprehend, but I am learning a lot about it. I, I tend to think there's a lot of hush-hush and a lot of things hidden in all fields when it comes to the sun. So what an eventful few days, right? That's what everyone's talking about. We've seen solar flares corona mass ejections and even geomagnetic storming indeed interesting and corona mass ejection from the m class did hit today around 145 utc time so what's coming there's a lot more on its way a cme thursday uh today x1 halo cme there's an x1.3 from wednesday the 30th of march also, Tuesday, the 29th of March, two coronal mass ejections causing a G3 storm, and that's the one that probably hit today. So we know the sunspot regions 2978 and especially 2975, as you see in this video, are really de delivering the um, latter group, uh, producing countless of C-class solar flares and even a couple of m-class solar flares yesterday's m 4.0 solar flare of course being the strongest so far this m 4.0 solar flare and a smaller m1 solar flare um, launched two coronal mass ejections into space both of which um, are facing and directed earth wise and the sunspot region 2975 remain a very complex beta gamma delta sunspot region which is capable of more m class activity which we should see throughout the week we should see some drastic weather changes and perhaps even a low key x class flare yet again so i talked with you all at the live stream and thanks for stopping by everyone by the way at the streams on friday yesterday we were talking about some things um, that were going to occur with the sun we're saying and some of you said bruce i wonder um, if the sun is going to slow down one of you even today on the french channel and on brucey's all yesterday again told me i think the sun's going to go back down and in general from what i'm seeing is that's basically what it's doing eh? two three days three five days and then it goes back down to normal ladies and gents we're seeing the sun on march 31st 2022 these are long videos i'm going to film it also for you outside i'm going to zoom up and show you as i'm zooming up to see the intensity and differences of um, being closer and not closer we're going to go see right now let's switch right away april 2nd 
2022. For those just arriving, I film the sun and only when the sun is active, when the sun is showing signs of sunspots. I film it all the time for UFOs and whatnot, plasma, etc. But basically when it's like this and when especially now waiting for several CMEs to hit Earth, an X and then a second X, Halo CME supposed to hit today, April 2nd. I mentioned at the live stream, hey, nobody's uh, spraying chemtrails. But the minute the stream finished, the sky was being bombarded by it. So I'm going to show you the UFO after that I found uh, in the sky. I was able to capture. Well, I didn't find it. It went by. A very large object, guys. It's probably a, an asteroid or a meteor, but it is extremely large. No debris at the back, so it wasn't something entering orbit. It's something that's farther out in space. And it's effing huge. So I'm going to show that to you too. And then remember right now what the sun looks like as I was filming it today, this morning. Because I'm going to show you at 5 p.m. to show you how much the sun will rotate. And that top right spot there, you're going to see it rotate all the way down. But first, so you don't get bored, we're going to go see the UFOs. Um captured with infrared and several meteors and asteroids flying around um, at the same time that I was able to film. So again, this is the sun during uh, April 2nd today. So I'm going to show you now, I'm going to go back outside um, and film it by zooming in to 16 to 1700 millimeters, really, really close. You're going to see me do that right now. And then after that, off to see the UFOs and back to see how much it changed at 5 p.m. Lots of cuts and lots of clips here. Thanks for the support to the channel, guys. So you see what happens with the light when I zoom in. It changes intensity of light. I know I adjusted it ahead of time, but there's a little adjustment you have to do when you zoom up on the sun, obviously. Um, here's another cut clip. So, you know, I don't usually see them that close. And even when I'm filming the sun close, the fires are usually not that big. There's a solar ring around um, the plasma there, around the, all the clouds around the sunspots. And it's concerning. I'm wondering if the sun is going to go back um, to normal as of tomorrow. Hopefully, obviously. And if not, boy, oh boy, we're in for some um, some crazy weather. I went to get some more batteries for the infrared cameras because I've been using them a lot. My rechargeable batteries from a year ago are almost done there. One, one set is done because that's how much I use them. There's a lot of use out of the batteries. All right, my friends, let's go over to the infrared and the cool captures. Large object in the sky, asteroid or meteor or UFO, UAP. It really looks like an asteroid and cone-shaped object. What do you think, guys? So I've been documenting what I've been seeing over the years, uh, filming with the infrared, many captures here, definitely a hot spot, as many of you have told me, um, capital of the world right here in Montreal. It's incredible what we can see. Look what happens on the right there in the camera. I wish I would have seen it longer and more clear. I mean, that is incredibly large. It's larger than anything I've ever seen with the infrared camera. That's the first time I see something that huge. You all know that I filmed this. It's almost the exact same thing. Re-entry, something entering Earth's atmosphere, right? With a tail end. It was beautiful. I hope uh, you remember that. And those of you, if you haven't seen it, I'll post it again in a day or two to show you the amazing tail end from this cone-shaped object or pill-shaped, tic-tac-shaped object. No, I'm not saying it's a UFO, but it is the shape of a tic-tac. It's a term... Many people use when they see that shape, and that's literally like a tic-tac tic -tac shape. One went by this way, then one goes by the other way, as you'll see here. Three, two, one, appears and enters. So that's much like a meteor, right? All different characteristics when you see objects in the sky. Here's one that appears out of nowhere and then decides it's going to blink itself back out. So they're very active. Right, let's head over to the sun now. What do you think? Wow. See that sunspot in the bottom right that was up on the top right? So now it's 5 o'clock, and that's the difference from filming the sun at 9 a.m. and then at 5 p.m. In a period of eight hours, 
That's how much the sun rotated. I'm going out on a limb here, but I I feel maybe the sun is not going to die down. I don't know. I hope so. In general, it should after this long of a time, especially with all those solar flares. It would be definitely more reassuring. So we'll look at it a couple of uh, different ways, filtered ways, and then we'll call it a day. Wow, all the way over to the right, there's the 2984, 2975 now, and there's another one over to the right. But over to the left here, I'm worried about the one on the right, for sure. This one right there. Got the 2975, 2984, there's three or four of them there. There's an 82 way over to the left that we don't see here, one on top. But these two here, the 2978 and the 2981, Hopefully they won't merge. They've been very active for the past uh, three days. So we'll see tomorrow morning what the sun looks like. I'll be up bright and early. Thanks for taking the time to watch these videos. It takes me a long time to put them together sometimes, especially the sun videos. Thanks for the comments. <laughs> Cause the slow just coming soon Cause the slow just coming